praise the Lord. Let's all stand for a moment. I want to say my condolences to all the Doremi family. Uh, that's live right now, right? No? It's going to be pretty soon live? Okay. Henry, my condolences, Henry. We're praying for you and your family. Uh, you guys are a blessing. We love you guys. And for all the rest of the family that could not make it for whatever reason or because of what's going on, my condolences to you. We love you guys. You guys are a very dear family to us. Uh, I want to share with you just a little bit on, on, on and, and I felt the Lord give me this message. Uh, what three last words did the Lord speak to Armando to prepare him for heaven? So, Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you, Lord, and we ask you that you would just minister to the family and all those that are listening, Lord, that you would minister to them. Minister to every hearer, every person that is hearing the word of the Lord. Prepare them and get them ready, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, that so much confirmation, Father, has been said and so many things have been said in, in confirming, Lord, you are preparing Armando. You are working on him, ministry to him. Lord, we thank you for that. We pray right now in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Those that shared testimonies, I want to thank you and also for the music. Amen. It's it's so beautiful, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, I the Lord ministered to me. What, what words? What did the Lord minister to Armando as the Lord prepared him to go then to heaven? Because I, I have all the assurance, I'm pretty sure some of you have all the assurance that we're going to see Armando in heaven. We're going, to, we're going to see him. How many would say amen to that? Amen. We're to, same thing. I've had to have that assurance even when I think of my brothers. The same thing. The Lord would prepare. The Lord would work. Right now in the church, we're learning about God. It's so interesting because when you know about God, you, you sort of have your mind fixed on the way that God works. It's not sort of like up and down. We're up and down. God isn't up and down. God is steady. God is consistent. God has a, such a beautiful order about doing different things. And, and any time that we think, well, God do that, and we'll God do this, and I wonder if this, I wonder if that, it's because you don't know God. Right. To know the Lord means that He never changes. The Bible says He never changes. God is consistent. God will always work. God moves. And when God begins to move, He works in that consistency. God is not an off and on or off and on type of God. It's a God that just continues to work. Amen. He also, we learn that he desires a loving relationship. And he'll never break that. He's a covenant God. Once God begins to work in your life or if he started working in your life and then we sort of lapse or we sort of fall out, God doesn't stop. God just continues the work. God continues just to minister and to work in that person's life. It is a loving relationship. I thank God for that. I, I thank God that so many people will make it to heaven because of that. Amen. We've also learned and we've also seen that every person that is born is known of God. You say, but how do you know that? Because he's the creator. Because he's the creator, then every person that has ever been known in Psalms 139, he says that, I saw you when you were in your mother's womb. I saw you when you were just a little nothing, little, little, tiny, little thing. And how we grew and how he put muscle on us and he put just a spirit inside of us. He was there when we were conceived, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So from the very beginning, God already has our number as we say mm -hmm. God knows us did God know Mando yes he knew him mm -hmm. he knew him right. he knew him as his creation but he also knew him as his son yeah. Armando was his son yeah. in the faith you say how do you know some of these things 
Pastor, how can you say some of these things? Because I, well, first of all, I asked. <laughs> I wanted to know. He grew up in the church. He probably left. Henry told me maybe when he was about 14 years old, he left the church, but he grew up in the church. And when you grow up in the church, you learn a lot of things. You hear a lot of things. And he was dedicated to the Lord, given to God. Imagine you already given surrender to God. God's hand was upon him. Was glad to hear that this last January he spent time with Joe. Dedicated himself back again to the Lord. And really what God was doing was preparing the way for him to meet him. That his heart would get back again where he belonged. His heart would once more be tender towards the Lord and not hard. God prepares us. Can somebody say amen? God, amen. God just, that's yeah. what God does. During the time that he was away from God, did God speak to Armando? Did God speak to him? Yeah, he did. And he spoke three words just like he would. He would. Every other person that leaves God. And Henry did the math. He was away from the Lord anywhere from 38 to 39 years. Imagine that. That's a long time. For the Lord to bring him full circle again, to bring him back. So what three words would the Lord speak to him? What three words would God speak to a person that has had God and has left the Lord? Here's word number one. Return to me. Or the word return. Return to me. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 12. And all through, the, all through that book he continues to say it over and over and over. Return to me. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 2 in Revelations he says return to me. Return in the Hebrew really means get back to the place where you started. He says, get back. He says, I, I want to know you. I want to know you back again to the place where you were tender, where you knew me, where you knew about me. What is Jesus doing during all this time? He's claiming what belongs to him. Armando belonged to him. Jesus was claiming him back. You don't belong to the devil. You belong to Jesus. And once we belong to him, he'll call us. He'll call us over and over and over. Thank God he doesn't get tired of that. Amen. Or some people, a hundred, two hundred, three hundred, maybe a thousand times he said that. Return to me. Return to me. In the book of Hosea and the book of Ezekiel, It's to me, this is so amazing and so profound because really he's like a husband calling a wife back and he says return to me because that wife took off with somebody else and really it was his people that he's calling and he calls us back and he says return to me return to me he desires to bless us and we run from him imagine that he desires to minister to us he desires to have a relationship with us he he desires even to protect us he says, return to me. And if you know God, you know that he's the great shepherd. So he's never going to stop saying that. Any time that we've known the Lord, then God will always come again. And he says, don't stay out there. Return to me. In the middle of our sinning, we could be parting. We could be in a lonely state. We could even be in our final days. And he'll say the same words because he is consistent. Return to me. Come back to me. So he tells us, first of all, return. Second of all, he tells us, remember. He says, remember the Lord. In Ecclesiastics chapter 12, verse 1. Now remember, I'm sharing with you that God is consistent. So God, when he begins to speak something, he speaks it throughout the word of God. So then he'll speak it to us when we're away or, we're, or when we're not where we should be with God. He'll speak it over and over and over and over. He says, remember the Lord. Verse 1 of Ecclesiastes chapter 12. 
He says, remember, now your creator. And then he says, in your youth, you must remember the Lord. He says that when you're able to do this and when you're able to do that, and when you have strength to do that, he says, remember the Lord. Then he comes back again in verse 6, and he says it again. Remember your creator, he says. This time he says that when you're old, he says, and before you die, he says, remember your creator. Verse 7, he says, before the body is put back in the same ground that it came from, the spirit returns to God who first breathed it, he says. So then the theme here is that it doesn't make sense to live this life without God. That's what he's saying. He said that in Proverbs. He says that in Ecclesiastics. He says it only makes sense. Everything makes sense. When you remember the Lord. Somebody say amen. When you, when you remember him. Just remember how good he is. Just remember what he did for you. Remember when you used to have him. Remember that. And he said that to Mando. Remember. He must have been in the streets. He must have been walking. He must have been sinning. He must have been doing other. Remember the Lord. Remember him. Mando, remember the Lord, remember him, remember him because, and you say, but how do you know that he said that? Because he did return. Amen. He returned back again yes. to be restored back again in the tender loving care of the Lord. He remembered. And even in his last days, possibly nobody was there, but God was there with him. Because the Lord had brought him back. He had remembered the Lord. It could have been 38, 39 years, but he remembered the Lord. Amen. Yes. He thought about him. And even in the last days, he thought, he knew. Here's the third word, repent. It tells us, return to me. Return. I thank God for that. I've heard so many people say that. Every person that has ever come back to God, I've heard them say that. Remember the Lord. Remember, remember that. And it's our mind. Our mind is tied into our conscience. And it's tied into our spirit. Remember the Lord. Remember the Lord. And then finally, repent. Jesus began his ministry like that. Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, he says, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The very first message Jesus spoke, the very first thing out of the mouth of Jesus was this. And probably the last words that he spoke in Revelations chapter 2, repent. So it was a theme with Jesus. It had to have been because that's how he got to his people. That's how he would minister to his people. That's how we would come to God broken and sincere and ready to meet him, ready to serve him. To repent really means a change of mind. It means the act of turning around. He says, turn it around. He says, go, now go the opposite way, repent. He's going to tell that to every single child of God or even ex child of God but with God there's no excess in there you're my child return to me Amen. now right. just like that he says it Amen. God goes and he claims what belongs to him you don't belong to the devil and you don't belong to the world you belong to me return Amen. back to me he says Amen. and he says remember he says remember what I did for you when you used to laugh and you used to have joy without booze Without getting high. Remember when you used to cry pure tears. He says, remember. We remember, look. Yeah. We flash back. We just know for a fact. We flash back. Mando flashed back. At his life till he came to the place. This is why he would ask for things. This is why he wanted things. This is why he had a, such... For, for a while there, he had such a thirst. He was trying to catch up because he had a heart of repentance. The Lord had touched him. The, the Lord will always tell us this because this is what opens the heart of God. 
Because even though we're his child, we're not close to him. But repentance brings us close to the Lord. And back again with the Lord. Back again in the, in the bosom of Jesus. Back again in fellowship with him. This opens up heaven for us. Because heaven has been closed for us. Ma imagine that, that. That we belong to him. And he's calling us and calling us. But heaven has not opened for us. Because I've not come to the Lord yet. From my heart in repentance. And I know that in those last days. Armando opened his heart. I know he did. He must have thought about Joe and his house. Those are the last things that, that he remembered. Back again in the fellowship, back again getting crazy on the drums, back again, you know, to the place where the Lord had ministered to him. He repented. The Lord spoke to him. You say, Pastor, how do you know these things? Hebrews 13, verse 5, he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Thank God for the fellowship of Jesus. Someone say amen. He say, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there, he's there. Amen. The good times and the bad times. He is so consistent, so steady. He's not like us up and down and crash and burn and mine, all kinds of ways. He's steady. He's always telling us, oh my God, I love you. How? How can we run from that? How? When we remember that. God was there with Armando. Those last few moments ministry speaking to him leading him getting ready to make his exit from this world there's a story that I tell every once in a while and it's from a brother here in the church his name is Emiliano and it's so insightful because of how he says it, he, he he's a young guy, I knew him, he was a little boy, grew up in church, years, years, stayed away from God, probably over 30 years. And the Lord would minister to him, and minister to him, and he was, he was involved, and he was one of the biggest guys involved in all these raves, and the raves. And people, underground parties, and all kinds of stuff, man, he was like a, man, a playboy slash, man, you know what I mean? Mean machine on the, you know, what do you, to, to the, what do you call that? <laughs> DJ. So, uh, DJ. The DJ, man. He's like, man, he's just going for it. And when he was in his, right at the height of his success, he's writing, a man, Mr. Buffy, he was getting buff. He's riding his bike to the gym, and here comes a truck. Man, full speed hits him. Full speed. And he says, Pastor, all I remember was I was in the air and the Lord in the air spoke to me. And he got a hold of me in the air before he landed now. Because when he landed, he was out. He was in a coma for almost a, a week. Broken bones, his body, I mean, completely shattered. But while in the air, the Lord got him and he told him, will you now come back to me? Yeah. Just like that, look. Will you now return back to me? He says, yes, Lord. Like this, like a full conversation going on. A lot of people say, how is it possible that you're able to right away, you know what, in, 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 a, in a flash, know him? Or I saw my life flash before me because the timetable of God is very different than our timetable. God can be ministering to you and working on you in, in, in a moment's time. And it was just one second or two seconds. He says, when I landed, he says, man, I, he says, I don't remember anything. But he says, but when I woke up, he already had the thing all through his head. He, he was in, a, in that 
uh, that uh, that head crown or what you call it, and man, all, all his body and in in uh, cast, and I mean, he was just. But he remembered. He remembered. The encounter with God. Remember. Wow. Everybody say remember. 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 It's, you'll remember. And from that moment on, he has served the Lord. Can amen. somebody say amen? It's been amen. probably about seven, eight years now. He served the Lord. The Lord has raised him up in a great way. Amen. And I want to pray. You know what God is doing right now? Calling every backslider back. Amen. He's calling us. Time is short. Yes. Time is short. I don't know who's gonna, I don't know who's going to watch this, but whoever whoever it is, I pray that if you're not close to the Lord, that you will come back to Jesus. Yeah. I want you to stand. Everyone standing. I want us to pray. I want us to ask the Lord, but as we remember Armando, that's what He's given us. If you think about it, that's what He's given us. The testimony of returning. The testimony now of knowing him. So beautiful. How God works. Look, so beautiful. I want us to pray. Pray for them. Every lost lamb of God come home. Every stray come back to God. Every person that has ever known him and just stepped away, it doesn't matter how successful you are, you are away from your maker. So Father, right now we pray, Lord, that you minister, that you work deep in our hearts. I pray for every person out there that's hearing me. Lord, that you would return them home. Return them back, Lord. Let them remember, Lord, the goodness of the Lord. Let them remember, Majesty, who you are. Lord, break their heart that they may repent. Father, come back to you. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you that you never give up on us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're always with us, Father, from the very beginning of our lives, Lord, all the way through our lives. Ministering to us, working, moving us closer and closer to our destination as time goes by, Lord, year by year by year, Lord. Father, I pray now, Lord God, bring them home. Bring them home, Lord. Every single person. I pray for every family member of Armando. If they're away from you right now, Father, speak to their hearts. Speak to their lives. May they never use the example of being away so many years, but quicken them now, Majesty, to know you, Lord. Today we just thank you. We praise you, Lord. We give you all honor and glory. And everybody said a great big amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Come on, can we give the Lord a good praise? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> uh, you know what? As we get ready to dismiss here, I, I want to give you, and I, I was going, you know, through the, uh, just through, through the word of God. And the Lord gave me the encouragement benediction. And, and I want to, I want to read it to you. And to all the family also, part of your comfort, part of your encouragement for the future that the Lord just ministered to you. I want to read it to you. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And it says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and our God and Father who has loved us and given us everlasting uh, uh, consolation, he says, and good hope by grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every work every good word and work. So Father, I pray for the family, comfort them, minister to them. Father, minister, Father, deeply, Lord God, to every single one, Father, that was close to Armando, for George and Henry, Lord, Father, their sister, Lord, comfort them and minister to them, Lord. 
And Father, may all the nephews and nieces, Lord, and all the grandkids know you. Yes. May they know you. May they be encouraged in you, Lord. Yes. We pray today in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. 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 God bless you guys. Be blessed in the wonderful name of Jesus. Mando. Amen. This concludes our service here for the celebration for Armando Jeremy. I just want to uh, thank every single one of you guys that came this afternoon. Um, remember always to continue keeping the family in prayer. Uh, make sure that you um, not only remember today, but also continue remembering the family, those that are still alive. Uh, continue praying for them. Make sure that uh, you're, if you get that phone call, call, text, or whatever, but... Once again, um, we just thank you. Know that God loves you guys and be blessed and be safe. Be careful on your way home today, this afternoon, and enjoy the rest of your guys' day. So, so this concludes our service today. Thank you. Amen.